Good day, my name is Angelo. This is Nation Voice Tower, that hub, that channel that keeps you updated on political occurrences in Nigeria and, its border, and as it borders the masses. Thanks for joining us. Discrepancies have um, existed over the profile and um, not just only the academic rec records of Paula Ahmed Tinubu, lots of discrepancies have been found in not only his academic records but um, his um, career profile um, inclusive and then um, his dates of birth, his, um, his profile in general, okay, his background, uh, his state of origin and all that, okay. So I decided to take a brief check into all of these um, discrepancies and I found out that almost 80% um, if not 94% of everything about him, his profile, his career and all of that uh, seems to be uh, having lots of discrepancies existing in them, okay? They seem not to be as it should be. And this is the reason why I delved into one part. And of course, that part has not been news for Nigerians because um, it, it's been viral for a very long while now, right from the time of um, the pre-campaign period around um, 20, 2022, around September, say October 2, you would have noticed that Right from those times, Bola Tenubu's certificates, his career profile were being doubted by members of the opposition party. So, I delved into the fact that, yes, he claimed to have worked with Deloitte, LLP, in New York. And um, this is the results I got. Yes, it's no longer news that he had claimed to work for Deloitte. And um, I want to bring to your, ex to, your, to your own notice how Deloitte actually denied having Bola Tinubu as a worker with them because not just only the fact that Chicago State University are trying to cover his own tracks but Deloitte showed that they can actually be an outstanding organization that would not cover up for any sort of criminality. Now Bola Tinubu claims to have worked with Deloitte. Yes, that was what he claimed but according to his Wikipedia profile, let me start from there. The information of Bola Ahmed Tinubu under his professional career claimed that he has worked for um, Deloitte as an accountant for the American companies, uh, not just Deloitte, he worked for Arthur Anderson and then he also worked for Deloitte and then he worked for GTE Services Corporation. All right? He later returned to Nigeria in 1983. That is what his um, Wikipedia profile, career profile is saying, as you can see on your screen, Tinubu worked as an accountant for the American companies Arthur Anderson, Deloitte and GTE Services Corporation. After returning to Nigeria in 1983, he joined Mobile Oil Nigeria and later became a company executive. Let's go straight to facts and um, pros and cons now. According to David Houdain, Paula Ahmed Tinubu claimed that he had made $1.8 million from salaries and bonuses while working as a consultant uh, at Deloitte USA. Deloitte was subpoenaed by a court sometime in September 2022 to provide evidence of Tinubu's employment and staff payment records. And Deloitte USA sent a huge reply. The letter from Deloitte dated September 20th, 2022, partly read, we received a subpoena 16 September 2022, seeking employment records for Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Please be advised that we have no records of Bola Ahmed Tinubu in our systems and as such have no employment records for them. The letter was duly signed by Tish Negron, the senior legal specialist of the company. Meanwhile, Bola Ahmed Tinubu had in an interview with the news, a platform that carries political news, and also in his Wikipedia profile claimed to have worked for Deloitte. Now, the second evidence on this particular issue shows you that um, this on your screen you can see is a copy of the interview with the news while Bola Tenibu was being questioned where he claimed to have worked for Deloitte LLP. Second document on your screen you can see is um, a document showing the records of subpoenas sent to Deloitte Limited Liability Partnership Company and Anderson Tax, known as Arthur Anderson, by one Robert 
G. Hanrahan Investigations, a private investigative um, firm in Chicago, Illinois. This particular expose goes forth to show you that Bola Ahmed Tinubu did not actually work for Deloitte LLP. Okay, Deloitte LLP would mean Deloitte Limited Liability Partnership. This company is resident actually um, in New York, United States of America, but has its headquarters in the UK. Okay, so over time, Polatinibu claimed he has he had worked with lots of companies, and that was what amassed him the um, unimaginable wealth that he had during those times. He claimed to have garnered one over one point eight million dollars from his salaries and bonuses after working for some companies in the united states these were found to be lies from the documents i've shown you you could confirm that bolatinibu never worked for deloitte and um, this particular documents also go forth to show that this case was discussed in court and it was confirmed done and dusted that bolatinibu never worked in any time in any capacity of any position with Deloitte Limited Liability Company. Aisha Yusufu, activist and member of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council, has reacted to the conversation of the Senate President, Senate, Senator Goswami Lakpabio, and um, some other senators like um, Senator Ali Undume, where Senator Goswami Lakpabio was admonished against hurriedly passing bills. I gave you updates on that particular occurrence during a plenary session where a particular senator stood up to speak and then he made a remark where he called out the Senate president and suggested that they shouldn't in any way rush the passing of bills because this may actually go forth to uh, set a very bad precedent in the near future. In response to this, um, Senator Goswami Lakpabio actually answered uh, in an answer or in a way that wasn't really the best of ways to answer. Senator Goswami Lakpabio was of the opinion that if he passes bills that are really helpful to Nigerians, then history will judge him right. Um, trying to debunk the statement coming from the other senator when he said history would not judge you right if you pass down bills that would not go down well with Nigerians. I think Aisha Yusufu has a different view from all of this. Please, let us pay attention and listen to her reactions. I just watched a video, right, where a senator, or he was talking to the Senate president and, and you know, complaining of the fact that bills are just being rushed, bills are being brought in and they are expected to be passed uh, with the speed of lightning. Uh, senators are not given the adequate time that they're supposed to have to study these bills and be able to make, you know, the required arguments uh, for or against them. And that these things just, you know, they're just like rushing. Things are just going through. Things are just being passed. And he talked about the fact that, you know, um, that the senior president will not always be on this seat and that history is going to judge him. And the senior president said something that, oh, yes, history is going to judge him good if the bills that are being passed are for the betterment of Nigeria and that he doesn't think that they're going to come here and pass bills that are not for the uh, betterment of Nigeria, that is not for the good of Nigeria. I know that's always a problem with when we don't understand what processes are. It doesn't matter whether you're doing the right thing. Even if you're going to do something that is beneficial, but you do it in a wrong way, it's still wrong. That's always one thing that people don't understand. There is a reason why there are processes and processes have to be followed. Because if you bring in this piece, even if they are beneficial, you don't follow the right channel, you don't follow the right process, and then you pass them anyhow, then what you have done, is that you have now set a precedent for a wrong or a bad uh, bill to be passed in the same manner. You can't say, you can't answer that, oh, yesterday you allowed it to be passed, today you won't allow it to pass. It doesn't work like that. Whatever it is has to be done the right way. And and like this, I've had uh, 
some senators complain about this thing have said a lot that they are being ambushed you're just sitting there before you know something pa, 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 something you know has gone and even i think even with the one of uh was it central bank or something like that where there was the uh, some of the senators a, a senator asked where is the uh what do you call it now letter of resignation because some of the says she, uh, they, they hadn't seen it, but they say, oh, it has been sent. Because before you put another person, one has to resign. The, the, uh, the, the Nigerian president does not have the power to remove uh, the, the CBN governor. Yes, they tried to dodge the law by suspending and doing all sorts of things. You either have to wait till the person's tenure runs out. You can't do this. But then a lot of ambushes are going on. And finally, openly, the senators are coming out to talk, to talk about this. These are things that we're doing that, gosh, we're just messing up this country, honestly. Messing it up the more, the more, the more. When you now begin want to all the work that needs to do just additional work systems are being compromised processes are not being followed right channels are not being used it's just so fast it can be so frustrating sometimes okay yeah uh, uh, welcome back that was aisha yusufu there um from her own point of view about the um issue that had to do with senator gosila babio and his um horrid way of passing down bills as indicated by some senators you know uh sometimes someone made a correction uh, uh, he, uh someone was like we should stop saying people should listen and pay attention nigeria is um a very big place there are lots of people that come up to give updates news podcasts and all that okay when you are giving a particular update some people may just think uh maybe you're you're, you're making a statement you're talking and um if there is a very important information to come to um your notice it's always good to pay or to draw your attention to it uh, that is why we have things like commercials advertisements and all that and uh, there would be something like a music that will come before it or something like a song which people like so much that will come before such advertisements or such commercials to draw your attention to that please um we would likely apologize for always calling your attention but that is just the right thing to do if you ask me Finally, the chairman of a particular estate in Ogun State has called out Governor Dapo Abiodun, the governor of Ogun State, and his own um, administration in uh, conjunction with the federal government for distribution of very funny looking bag of rice, one bag of rice to be very, very precise, as palliative to over 100 people. This is sad. This is absurd because this particular palliative we're talking about is actually more appalling than um let's say suiting that it, it that it was supposed to be these are palliatives that are supposed to be uh helpful they're supposed to be suiting to the citizens of nigeria to help you know to cover up but when you look at this particular package that was delivered to the estate people in that particular area where this chairman is from you will notice that the palliative is or uh, that particular item is more pitiful or is more pity looking yes yeah, let me use that word compared to what it was meant to serve or the purpose it was meant to serve please watch this video i am the chairman of shokaya for now i am the chairman shokaya cda and i was just at home now and uh, they brought this for me as palliative for the whole of shokaya estate in this estate we have 147 houses with families and tenants living there i'm confused now i don't know how to share this for 147 households in shokaya estate if you guys the government i'm talking to dr abiodun now if you people know you cannot do something don't do it we are not hungry we are not beggars so we don't need your rice as palliative this is not even one bag this is not up to an eighth of a bag of rice so right um you watch the video there in as much as it seems funny but this is not funny anymore this is not funny anymore you are trying to help people to grow you are trying to help the economy to grow by by imputing 
uh, lots of hard work, energy and resources in human resource development, that is a good way to start. All right. But that shouldn't start in this appalling manner. That bag of rice, that is not even up to a bag of rice. That's that item of rice or that, yes, that bag of rice there, half, uh, one third or one fourth, whatever quantity it is, does not even speak well of the government sending such a mega uh, portion of rice for a big estate like that. How will over 100 people uh, uh, share from this particular bag of rice? It is more appalling than it was supposed to be. Okay, or it is it, it, it is it is more it is more mind breaking than the main reason why the palliative was even given at the first place. So let, let the government help if they want to help, and if you cannot, I guess you would devise what that means. The man said there, people are not hungry. People need different sort of help. People are not hungry. They don't need this. Thank you so much for staying with us. I would urge you to like our videos, share them. Don't forget to drop a comment for us in the comment section. If you're watching me for the first time, please tap the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you get to see me anytime I drop a new update. Maybe you're going to be among the first people to know. Don't you like that? See you next time. Thank you for all your corrections and all your um, jobs you put in to make this platform grow, liking our videos and doing all that. You're doing a very good job. I will serve you better over time. See you next time. Bye.